Hey, hey, Nathan speaking. If you popped on this video, you'll be interested in my DNA results being revealed in this video. And does this impact your fitness genes? So stay put, watch the video all the way through because I have something for you at the end. You're watching the NH Fitness Lifestyle channel. And if you haven't been here before, be sure to subscribe for all my content using the subscribe button below. Also hit that bell button and give this video a like. On this particular channel, we always will be helping you achieve a fitter, healthier lifestyle in both body and in mind. I'll be offering advice on how to improve your habits, your intake and your movement, as well as tips on setting them future goals and most importantly, how to enhance your potential. Now, on this particular video, I'm actually going to be revealing all about my DNA results and also how it's impacted my fitness. But more importantly, I'm going to help you with how it all gets set up, how you obviously do it all, and the results I actually get, how that's going to really help me knowing these particular results. So watch the video all the way through. And just like I said at the beginning, I have something for you at the end. So here we go, we're gonna start with the first stage in order to get them results. Just come back from the gym and what has arrived? This. Now you may not know what this is, so I'm gonna open it up and show you exactly what this is. Let's see another package. So from Biosynergy, this is the Biosynergy DNA test. Again, absolutely fantastic to find out what you may be intolerant to. When you find out what you're intolerant to, then you can adjust all your meals and your diet around what, what actually suits you for your body. Because everyone's different at the end of the day, and this test will reveal exactly that. As you open this up, let me just take it out of this initial box. And then as you reveal what's inside, it looks like this. Now, if you've ever done any sort of heritage or DNA type of testing, you'll find you normally have to register. Uh, in Biosynergy's point of view, they've got an app. So obviously you register on that app first off, and then obviously this is where you put your sample and you send that The next that step on. is, I'm gonna take my sample. And the best way how to do that is take this out, unscrew the cap, and as you can see, there is some fluid in there already, and it's around about two milliliters. So what I need to do is I need to put my saliva in there up to four. So what you have to do is you have to put, screw this on, just so it doesn't get messy. So that's quite solid on there. So obviously I can look at it. And obviously it seems madness, but you just basically got to keep spitting in it until it gets to about four millilitres. Almost there. So now that's, you can see that's four millilitres. And the next step is, just make sure it's all out. You unscrew that back off. And then now we screw that back on, okay? So obviously make sure it's solid on there. One of the key things what it does say is make sure you haven't eaten for the last half hour before you do the sample uh, to make it more accurate. And now that's that part of it's done. You've got this bag which you put that in. So I'm going to put that in there. I'm going to register on the app and then obviously that's going to go into the post. To register your details, the first thing you need to do is to download the Biosynergy app. So type in search bio forward score synergy and that icon will come up. As soon as you see that widget, click on that to download. As you can see, this is downloading right here. Once you've done that, open it up. And then as you can see, Biosynergy and then you'll get the intro screen. And then the first thing you'll get there is to register a kit, which in my case I've bought that, so I'm going to register that. And then it states, have you already purchased the DNA or epigenetics? In this case, I've purchased the DNA. So then you're going to put in all your personal details. And it also will ask you for the code, which is on that tube, what you're going to send off. And that's it. 
So there it is, all sealed already, and then basically gets posted, and then the results will be revealed. So I've got the results on my phone, so I'm ready to share these results, but I have to add, I've had some extra insight on these from two people. I've had a group session with James Brown, who is a director of Nutrigenetics and founder of this particular DNA company. And I'm just going to let this play a little bit longer because he's going to explain exactly about his background, which led to him doing what he does. Okay, so my background, um, I'll try and keep this as brief as possible. So I'm an ex-professional rugby player. I used to play for England juniors through all age groups. Um, they got signed by Harlequins when I left school at 16, going on 17. Got injured at 19, so I had to retire. Alongside that, I was doing my first degree at St Mary's at just um, sports science, as you do when you're playing rugby. Um, I went into bodybuilding, powerlifting and nutrition work. Did my second degree at St Mary's in nutrition and dietetics. Um, then worked in as a nutritionist for the best part of 20 years. Then I segued into nutrigenetics and nutrigenomics back in 2010 after two of my younger cousins sadly passed away from cystic fibrosis. So I had a bit of a, I was just reading about it in the background that they, they were telling everyone in the family this genetic, but no one else in the family has had it before or after. Um, so studied studied a little bit about the DNA and genetics back then, but there was no way really to get any sort of qualification because nutrigenomics is such a new branch of science. So I had to distance learn through La Trobe University over in, over in Oz. Um, flew out there for two days of exams. Luckily I passed and flew home. So um, there, there we are, that's a snapshot of myself. And also I've had a one-to-one -one with Wesley, who's the performance director of this company too. And a bit later in this video, I'm gonna share one element of this Zoom meeting in particular about my physical results, because we went into a lot of details and it was absolutely fantastic. And special thank you for these guys, because they've been absolutely brilliant. And it's given me a really good insight, not only on my results, but also I may be in a position to help others when they do this particular test too. So thank you very much. So I'm gonna go into my results now. So I've received notification, the results are through, go straight onto the app. So I have it all right here. And what I wanna start off with is what exactly is DNA? Because you may be wondering this. It's a long molecule that contains our unique genetic code. In simple terms, really, it makes us individual and different to each other. And most importantly, if you know what your DNA is, you can do your best in your lifestyle to prevent these certain things you may be lacking in. Or it could be interesting to know the things what you're above average in. So that's what I'm going to go into. So I'm going to first of all go into the app right now. And then I'm just going to show you the first bit what you get when you first go into the app. So I've opened up the Biosynergy app right here. So when you open the screen, you get at the top of it, you've got the DNA results, which is what we're going to go into. Then you've got the health insights, and then you've got genetic action plan, epigenetics result, which I'm going to explain what epigenetics is at the end of this video, but that's like a follow-up test. And then you've got your meal guide, which you can follow the questionnaire on that, and you can do their meal guide. They give you a full advice on all about that and my training. So you can go into a lot of detail with this. I'm going to go into my DNA results. When you click on that, you've got a summary. Now, I got confused with this when I first went on there because the summary, there's a filter to the right. So when you click on that filter, it goes into the things what you're deficient in or you have a genetic sort of deficiency and don't mean that you are. Then when you click across, it'll go all the things what you're normal or in the middle at, which would be bang in the middle, as you can see in that arrow. And then you've got all the things which you are kind of above average at. So a lot of these things are being green. And then you've got the overall one, which just shows them all. So as you can see, if I scroll through this, it will go through absolutely each of them elements all the way to the bottom, starting with the low. And it goes to the medium ones or the normal. And it gradually goes up to the things that you're above average on, as you can see on the screen. And across... If you wanted to go into more depth, you've got diet. So that's shown all the things in relation to diet, as you see carbohydrate response and so on. And then you've got health, so going for all the health related stuff. Then it's got physical, which is quite interesting. And then you've got your, your vitamins. So what I'm gonna start with 
is I'm going to go into summary. The reason is on this video, I just want to give you certain things which I feel most people is going to have this similar element to in my sort of experience. So I'm going to scroll down and I'm going to go straight to vitamin D because it's come up with myself that I've got an increased risk of being vitamin D. But once again, the DNA doesn't mean you are. That just shows that you may have an increased risk of being deficient in it. You may not be absorb it as well. So when I click across, as you can see, it gives you a massive definition of what that's all about. But I'm not going to go into that. I just wanted to show you. And then it's also got recommendations on there as well. So you could, if you had the chance and you got this app, you can read through all that. Now, it's got a recommendation at the bottom. As you can see, it's got the products on it to show them what you need. So that's how good this is, is that when you know you're, you could be an increased chance of being deficient, you can take action and you can choose, say, having more vitamin D. In particular, in the winter in the UK, it's not that sunny. So for me, I know I'm probably, the chances are, I'm probably going to need to have more vitamin D in my diet or I'm going to have to take an additional supplement which I already do anyway. The next one, which I'm going to go down to, will be B6. So I've got an increased chance of being B6 deficient. So once again, as you can see, it's got on there, vitamin B6 deficiency, and it's got a description all about that there, as you can see on the screen. And it's got the recommendations. So it says here, for example, at the top of the recommendations, this means you probably need more than the average recommendation of one to three milligrams to keep levels sufficient and to avoid deficiencies. So again, if I'm not having an over amount in my foods, then I'm going to have to go towards some sort of supplementation of that. And once again, as I scroll down, it gives me some ideas of some of the stuff what they have. As it stands, I'm having the Super 7 as a supplement. As you can see on the screen, that's what that is. So if I click back again, Again, I'll go to B12, which is, again, I'm clicking on this because most people what are here of will be, have this same sort of issue with be B12 deficient. But in my DNA, it's showing that I've got, I've got an increased risk again. Again, B12, it generally comes from the soil, and they say that we lack in this more due to the fruit and vegetables not being, as it's pure form, being how we mass produce it. And recommendations again, I'll just read the top of this again. This means you probably need more vitamin B12 to keep levels sufficient. It is recommended that you pay special attention to your regular consumption of vitamin B12 containing foods and also supplement in to reach at least the minimum recommendations of levels of two to four MCG. One serving of meat or about 14 sheets of dried purple labor non daily can provide the required amount. So, as you can see, if you take time to read that, it actually gives you some really good insight of how it's going to help you. So, click back from that. And, like I said, on that summary, as you can see, there's quite a lot on there. I mean, one thing I've discovered is saturated fats response is poor. And that's quite interesting because I do know when I go more on a high fat, low carbohydrate, I feel quite sluggish. And that may be due to having too much saturated fat in my diet when I go more on a high fat. But on the other end of that, I remember seeing, so I'm going to click across this a minute, on things what I have above average on, unsaturated fats, it's very beneficial for me. So that's where it's a bit of a double cross sword because I'm very good on saturated fats, but I'm not so good at saturated fats. So if I was to do that again, and I was to go more on a low carb, high fat, I'd have to really plan to have lots of unsaturated fats and keep the saturated fats at the minimum. So being that we're on this as well, because obviously we're, I'm clicking on the ones on above average, when it comes to physical exercise, my muscle power is, a, is above normal, which is really good because that surprises me. But it does show when I do lift weights, I have a really good response. 
I'm now going to share the part of the meeting with Wesley about my physical results. Um, next, one I'm up, um, next one I'm up to is physical. We're okay. on to now. So the first one, it says muscle power above normal. Happy days. Brilliant. Power is, is fast. And then you'll have stamina, mu you'll have muscular endurance next, which is slow. Right. Okay. And it's got muscle stamina above normal again. Yeah. So all that means is, is you have the ability to train both ways to gain um, a positive effect. So some people have a massive muscular power, like they're gifted, super gifted, you know, that kind of level. And they're very low on the um, muscle stamina. So they would obviously err on the side of training more muscle power wise rather than muscle stamina for you because yours are level. It makes your periodization of training quite easy because you can go, I'm going to do a four week block on muscle power. I'm going to do a four week block on hypertrophy and then I'm going to do a four week block on stamina. And you're basically covering off all your different muscle fibers. It just means you've got a split of muscle fibers more equal than some other people. That's all. That's really surprised me that because I thought my muscle power would be about normal. I didn't think it would be low. I didn't think it'd be high. I thought it'd be around the middle, but I thought muscle stamina would have been really high. When I was younger, I'd say I was always really good at long distance. But when it comes to doing something, let's like, say, like a short sprint or anything involved sort of lifting anything, I felt pretty weak. But obviously, as I've got older, I've developed more the muscle. So I always felt that, that me developing that with my lifestyle encouraged that side. But I thought I was predominantly more muscle stamina in that, in that sense. Yeah, again, it, it, it links back to what you, what you do with your lifestyle and your environment. Obviously, you know, I would know if my muscle power wasn't, you know, elite or super elite um, or, you know, I was super gifted, sorry, then I know I probably would never be an Olympic sprinter. And I, I know I used to be, I used to be very quick, but actually my anaerobic threshold is, and my stamina is actually better, even though I was running, you know, 11 second, 100 meters. Yeah. I could repeat that over and over again. I was never going to be a top Olympic athlete when I played rugby, but I was able to repeat, repeat, hence why I played Wells rugby sevens because I was able just to repeat, repeat, repeat for that short period of time. Uh, but I was still semi quick, but mine are basically my stamina is higher than my power. But when I look at my other results, I'm actually, I'm actually very powerful for my size because I can lift most of my lifts are over my double my body weight. Um, yeah. anyone that's like my bench press, um, but anything yeah. like deadlift and my squat is my, you know, double over double my body weight easily. Most people say they're quite surprised of my strength. I mean, there's obviously there's different forms of strength and yeah. people probably need to research into it. But all I'd say is look at what's called the strength velocity curve and that will explain to them how to develop strength in different ways. Um, and there's lots of different ways to in, improve strength. Um, people believe it's about pushing um, weight, the, mo the most weight as possible is called maximal strength mm -hmm. or absolute strength. And that isn't necessarily the best way for everyone to train. Um, one, it incurs most injuries because you're obviously putting the most you know, strain through the muscle tendons and ligaments, but also it's not necessarily the best way to train. And when I talk to people about time under tension, um, people kind of aren't very sure and understand it. But when you actually teach someone how to do proper time under tension training, um, you can still lift a decent weight, but the weight's now under control. Mm -hmm. You're now putting the muscle fibers through more tension over time, and you're actually then doing more damage that way. So you don't necessarily need to lift a massive weight to damage your muscle. And more often than not, you normally damage it in a negative way because it, it's, you shouldn't be pushing that amount of weight, you know, day in, day out. Nice one, which leads on nicely to O2 usage, <laughs> which mine's just normal. The O2 usage is aerobic. So you're, you're anaerobic. So your next one down should say anaerobic threshold. Yes, it does. That comes up normal. That, so, one. You know, that would be more a hundred meter thing because your hundred meters oh, is only 10 course. seconds long. So if you look at energy systems, and it, the three energy systems, obviously, the first energy system is for sprinting. The middle one is more for middle distance. And then, obviously, the aerobic is the top end. But aerobic means you use oxygen. Okay. I mean, both of them are normal for me, the anaerobic and the O2 usage. So maybe it's, it's just strange how the long distance thing, I used to be able to just jog for it. I still can. I probably can go out, have a long distance jog, and it'll feel second nature. It'll feel easy. Yeah. Um, but like, it's it's what you've done all your life that's what i say it's trainability you've trained yourself to do that um and that's what people don't understand it's like right. saying actually if i put you in a swimming pool and i make you swim up and down if you're not a swimmer you wouldn't you wouldn't be able to keep going because you yeah. have trained your body that way like i'm i'm a great sprinter in a swimming pool but i'm really really bad at going for more than two minutes because i haven't got 
the aerobic endurance to do that. But you put me on a rugby sevens pitch, I'll run all day. Right. So it, okay. it kind of look at the trainability of what you're actually doing and being more specific around what you're trying yeah. to achieve. Hence why I said is if I'm trying to lose weight, there's a specific way that I can do that. But it, everyone goes, oh, I have to do high reps and high volume. Well, not necessarily, because you can still lose weight through doing HIIT training and through doing yes. weightlifting and lifting a decent amount of weight because your body may be more prone to that way of training. Yes. You could, you could have found that in school you were okay at the 100 metres and you could have kept doing the 100 metres and you got better and better. But when yes. it got to the elite level, you, you, know, you, might, you might not have made it. And same with cost crunchy. You know, to a certain point, you may have got there. And then when you got to the elite level, you haven't then made it because you're good, but you're not elite. Yeah. And, and it's got recovery rate fast. Happy days. That's important to have fast recovery. And that obviously all that will do will link back into your training. So when you look at your training, you'll be able to go, actually, I recover quite quickly so I can actually do more sessions. Whereas you had slow recovery. That's when you need to look at and go less is actually more. Um, And that's when people go wrong as well. People are like, well, I've got to train six days a week because Tom over there is doing it and he's a physique model or a Olympic athlete. So I need to train the same as him. By doing a DNA profile, it takes away that guesswork. So you don't go, I'm going to train like Tom over there. I'm actually going to look at my profile and go, oh, actually, I don't need to train six times a week. I only train four. And that's an interesting point, that one. Um, muscle mass is normal. So, And then injury risk is normal. Handy. That's handy. <laughs> Soft tissue inf- information, lower r- response. So that's so a positive and a negative, depending on how you want to look at it. It's a positive meaning that you're not going to highly inflame. So I'm the, other, I'm the other end of the spectrum where I highly inflame, which means if I don't recover appropriately and I don't eat the right foods and take the right supplements after I train, basically my, my body, my muscles inflame, but also your gut inflames. Um, and you need to calm that inflammation down to make sure that when you're, when you're going to eat foods and, and vitamins, mineral supplements, that you're actually absorbing them in the gut. And obviously if your gut's inflamed and you don't inflame, reduce that inflammation and you don't reduce the inflammation in your muscle then you're not going to absorb the food and the the goodness that you need to to repair um and then the the negative from it is if you highly inflame and you recover quickly um and you do the right thing you actually get better adaptations quicker um but that's why you're able to train more because your inflammation is low and your recovery is fast which means you train more so that's where you can see now that how they work together um lean body mass normal um, power to weight ratio, good ratio. Which you probably, you'll probably know that anyway yourself. You'll probably go, I can dip all day, I can pull up all day, I can do sit ups, I can do press ups all day. You know, I'm the same. Luckily, with the way I've trained over my life, I can do dips all day long. Um, people hate me for it and pull ups, even, you know, because I just keep going and going and going. That's trainability as well. Yeah. And exercise effect on weight, good response. So it just means you can manipulate your weight better through training and exercise. Um, you know, basically people don't understand how important nutrition is. Um, and that, that's normally the biggest problem because you want to change your nutrition. Obviously training is obviously going to aid that because obviously you're burning calories um, and obviously working out what your calories in calories out. If you're kind of down, want to go down that route is, is important just to, so you know that you're training right for the amount of weight you, you want to put on or take off. I hope you found that part of the meeting about my physical results insightful. Now what I'm going to do is just reinforce the importance of the recovery result. And on the other end of that, it says my recovery rate, as you can see, is right at the top. So it has a fast recovery rate, which is amazing for me to know that because now I know that I need less recovery, which means I can train that little bit more. Now the reason why this is important maybe for you because if you used to do this test and it come up that your recovery rate was in the red, then you may need to have a lot more rest. Well, we know that you need a lot more rest. So your plan and regime will need to be scheduled out that you have a sufficient amount of rest with your workouts. The other thing which I really like about this test is the other things where it says I'm above average on when it comes to physical is my exercise effect on weight. So when I do a weight session and I get an instant response look wise, and that's because I'll have a good response to it where someone might be on the other end where they do a weight session and, and I can't really see much effect look wise. So that's an important one to know. And the same as muscle stamina, I'm above normal as well. So these are all just some of the 
things which is really beneficial for me to understand. But again, like I said, you can kind of go into as much detail as you want when you're looking at these things. But like I said, I don't want to go into massive amount of depth with me. I just want to really encourage you to maybe try something like this to really help with your exercise and your nutrition and obviously help with maybe changing some habits. So I'm now going to go into health insights. As you can see on this one, it's got anti-aging, it's got eye health, it's got gut health, heart health, immunity, injury risk, mental health, muscle health, skin health, sleep and stress. Now, a big element at the moment, which seems to be a lot about is mental health. So let me click on to mental health. I'm just going to click on this and I scroll down and it's got things like I've got a possible, I'm probably going to be a workaholic where I'm going to overwork. So that's important to be aware of that. That is actually in my gene. So I have to be very careful with that. Another thing it would be caffeine and focus. So caffeine is a negative to me. It doesn't actually give me any extra focus whatsoever. Night productivity, non-night worker. So it's no good for me working at night because it's not really going to help me in terms of that. Because it says dealing with memory tasks, I'm at top level, which is really good to know that. So I'm going to click back now. And the other thing I want to click on to is immunity, because that's quite relevant what's going on at the moment. And when I scroll down, it's got immune function is great response. That's in my DNA. And then vitamin D and immunity is beneficial. B, vitamins and immunity is beneficial. Vitamin C, again, affecting immune function is high up there. So vitamin C is really good for me. Like I said, there's loads of stuff on there which I can go into, but I want to keep this video really informative enough that it's keeping you interested. So that's my results. Hope it's been really great for you. And like I said, I would like you to take the opportunity what I'm offering you, and that is that I'm, I'm happy to offer you a free consultation I've left the link for this DNA packet here. But if you contact me that you're interested in this, if you purchase it through myself, I will give you a free consultation to go through these results. And like I said, I've been given a really good insight from the two guys I mentioned at the beginning of this video. But before I go, what I'm going to be doing next after this is I'm going to be taking an epigenetics test, which is that is pretty much making it an easy term. And epigenetics is what you actually are at the moment. I'm just gonna play this meeting with James. This part of it is where he explains exactly what epigenetics is. So he's gonna explain a bit more detail than what I have. So basically nutrigenetics and nutrigenomics. So um, flip sides of a coin. So nutrigenetics basically looks at how your genes affect your ability to process your food and specifically your, your, your micronutrients. And um, then we've got nutrigenomics, which is the flip sides. So nutrigenomics basically looks at how your, your diet, your lifestyle and environment will again affect those gene variants and affect those genes and genetic expression. And then we move on from that. Epigenetics is the science of seeing how, again, those lifestyle changes, food, specific nutrients, uh, having an effect sitting on top of the DNA in your genes and actually controlling your genes in many instances like a mutation. So there's three aspects to look at there. So my epigenetics might come up, for example, that my vitamin D levels are at a good level, but my DNA says I've got an increased chance of being deficient. But if my epigenetics come up that it is that I'm deficient at the moment, then obviously my lifestyle isn't working. So I need to add some more vitamin D in. So that's where the epigenetics come in. Well, I'm going to share a video on that probably in the next couple of months. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Be sure to click on the link below. And again, special thank you for the guys helping me out with this one as well. If you haven't already done so, give this video a like, click on that subscribe button and hit that bell button. And I hope to see you next time.